okay, we're going to turn off the frequency separation group. There's our before, and then we'll turn it on. There's our after. That's magic, to me at least. Okay, I'm easily impressed there, but... Shooting into the sun has become really popular these days, especially in landscape photography. A lot of photographers like to shoot into the sun because they can get that sun star effect, which actually looks pretty cool in some photographs. But one of the problems when you're shooting into the sun though is that you get a problem called lens flare. Lens flare is caused when the light bounces back and forth between the lens elements and onto the sensor with the final result, you get these unsightly little spots on the lens that look like dust or watermarks and it just doesn't look really good in the final product. So what we wanna do is try to eliminate those spots and today we're gonna to show you how to do that in Photoshop using something called frequency separation. So let's go over to the computer and show you how that's done. Okay, so we're in Photoshop here and I've got a photograph here uh, of a tree and I've tried to get that sun star right in the uh, bottom of the picture here. I'm gonna zoom in. You can see when we zoom in, there's these little spots here and they just don't look very good. Sometimes if you only have one or two, it's not too bad, but if you have too many, it can just be distracting and take away from the image. So what we want to do is just get rid of those. So we've got our photograph here. To do frequency separation, the first thing we need to do is open our image. We have that opened here. And we're going to click on the background and we're going to copy that background twice. You're going to click Command J twice so that you now have two copies of that background layer. And the first layer we're going to rename as color. And the second layer we're gonna call texture. Yeah. There we go, texture. Now we'll select the color layer and we're gonna to wanna to put a filter on that layer. So we're gonna to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're gonna pick a value of 10 right here. So click okay after you select 10. And now we're gonna to go to texture. We're gonna select the blend mode. So you can see right here, the blend mode. We're gonna change that blend mode to linear light. And we're gonna run another filter through the texture layer. So we're gonna to go to filter, other, high pass. And the high pass filter, a lot of times you're going to have to refine it. So one value for one photograph might not work for another. So each one does take a little fine tuning from shot to shot. But for this one, we'll select, um, we'll go with 3.5 on this one here. So 3.5, we'll click OK. And now we have the texture layer. So with this, we're going to want to create a group. So we're going to hit Command G. And now we have our group. We'll call that group and rename it Frequency Separation. Okay, so now that we have that, we can see it kind of changes the overall look of the background layer. So a lot of times you're gonna wanna do this technique early on in the edit, because once you've done all your other edits, it can really affect the contrast and the sharpness of things maybe you don't want to become too sharp. So again, do this technique right at the beginning of the editing process. Okay, so now we wanna select the color layer and we're gonna go to our stamp tool. So our stamp tool is over here to the left. We can click that or we can just hit S on the keyboard and we have our stamp tool pulled up here. We'll make it just a little bit bigger here. And I'll blow this up so you can see what we're doing. And the real important part about this technique for the color layer is that you wanna change the stamp tool. Uh, you're you're gonna to wanna to change the sampling to current layer. You can see there's current layer and current and below and all layers. But again, it's really important to select current layer for your stamp tool. It took me so long to figure this out. I was selecting current and below before and until I found out that it should be just current layer, this finally started working for me. So that's a really important point there. Okay, so we have current layer selected for our sample here. We have our stamp tool. We have the color layer selected. Now we're ready to begin. So we're gonna sample this part of our image here 
and we're going to want to slowly work that in. So we've got an opacity set to about 100 and we've got our flow set to about 25, 26% there. And again, we're going to sample what we want. And you can see as we brush that in, that lens flare is magically disappearing. We're going to go and select this one here. And you just want to slowly work it in there. Try to pick different areas where you feel like the uh, brightness uh, matches what you want there. Now we can go towards this one. And now one more here. And one more there. And you can see it's doing actually a really good job of taking away our lens flare. So just want to slowly work it out there. You want to make sure you work it in slowly so you have a nice blend and a natural blend there. Okay, we're going to turn off the frequency separation group. There's our before, and then we'll turn it on. There's our after. That's magic, to me at least. Okay, I'm easily impressed there, but uh, you can see what I'm saying. It's a really easy technique. Now, watch when you look at the rest of the image here. You can see how it's kind of weird and kind of crunchy because of that frequency separation layer and the high pass filter. So watch when we turn it off and turn it back on again, we can see it gets pretty crunchy. So if you don't like that result, you can actually throw on a mask and we're going to take that mask and fill it with black. So now you can see when we have our mask, our effect of the frequency separation and removing of the lens flare is gone. But what we want to do is now with that mask, we can work it back in with a brush. So we'll select our brush tool over here on the left, or you can just hit B on the keyboard or with our brush tool, select white. So with white and using masks, if we have a black mask, white will reveal anything underneath that mask. So we've selected white and we're going to work our frequency separation back in. So make sure you select your mask and let's bring it back in there. And now you can see how well that works. Any other adjustments that we've had come back in. And we can see it doesn't affect the rest of the picture here. Watch when we turn it off and on. The top part right up here, uh, the top part here, the branches, the trees are not being affected. But when we look here at the bottom, the lens flare is the only thing that is being affected and it's taking care of that. Now it's not perfect, so you do have to dial in those adjustments for the high pass filter and the Gaussian blur to each individual image and you have to see what works for one versus the other. Again, using the mask technique and blending it back just where you want the effect and the correction is gonna help a lot with controlling how much of that um, correction that you have in your photograph. And that's pretty much all. It's a really powerful technique that you can do right away there. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching guys. And if you found that tip useful, make sure to hit subscribe and click that notification bell for more photo tips, tricks, and camera gear reviews. Until next time, thanks again, take care, and we'll see you soon.